Hi, fellow traders. Well, we survived the week. And I know personally, I waited all week for this phase three bill to go through. And because I, I was waiting for the market to give us a strong bounce. But throughout the whole week, the market bounced as it was anticipated. And by the time the news came out, market was exhausted. You know, we were done. We didn't even get a decent um, pop once the bill was passed and and all of that. So you know, it was kind of what we had talked about already, that the move was already, it was already in. Um, so the only place it had to do was to, to come back. You know, and everybody was thinking that this was the bottom because we had started bouncing already. But the guys that know, the guys that understand, everybody was warning you, you know, that this is this probably isn't the bottom. But the market has to do some work in order for us to know that this was the bottom. You know, it's, it's almost impossible to, to pick. You can guess. And people that guessed and bought, um, they made a, a little bit of money this week. But they were just lucky. So next week, when we get into Monday, I think that's going to determine what to expect from here on out. Uh, then Monday is going to tell the story. We did see a little bit of the story today. Now, I had to take off. I couldn't stay. I moved my, my daughter out of her dorm room. They, I don't know why they had everybody doing it this early, but none of the other schools in the state are doing it. They're they're waiting, but we had to go do it today. Got it done, and I was afraid that I was gonna miss any little pop that came out, but I'm not disappointed at all. To to be honest with you. Uh, so you can tell by the picture what I'm going to be talking about today. And it, it came up in chat today. And, you know, I felt I, I really need to be clear on this. And so you guys understand exactly how I feel about stop losses. Now, I know this is a double negative. We all hate to hear the word stop growing up. When our parents would tell us to stop doing this and stop doing that, you know, it was fun what we were doing. It might have been mischievous, but it might have been dangerous. And, you know, we could have gotten hurt and our parents are telling us to stop. But we're enjoying ourselves. So every time we would enjoy ourselves and we would hear the word stop, stop it, stop doing that, it would, it became a negative force in our lives. And we're probably bringing that into trading. Loss. That's another bad word. You know, how many of us grew up liking losing? Or really felt good about losing stuff? Especially money. We did. So that's another thing that, that causes anxiety in us. We put the two together. I mean, that's a double whammy. But we, have, we can't look at it like that. Stop losses are things that are that protect us, that keep us from losing our shirt in the market and allow us to consistently make money. And so I'm going to use the trade that we took today. Now, I'll go over the trade later, but I want to use this as an example for um, the stop losses. So for me, there are two stop losses. There is a mechanical stop and a technical, I mean, a max, a technical stop, I'm sorry, and a max loss or a hard stop. And this is typically going to be the mechanical stop. This is where you're going to actually put a stop order in so that you don't have to rely on yourself to stop out if you reach max pain. Because what can happen it happens to a lot of new traders. You get that deer in the head like, look, especially if a stock pops on you. And all of a sudden, it's gone 
20, 30 cents beyond where you want it to stop out. And everything gets tight and you just, your mouth is open and you're like, you don't know what to do. And the stock just keeps going up and you're sitting there in disbelief. Uh, so that's going to protect you. So that's, that's the hard stop. The technical stop is based off of the level that you, that your trade is based on. So we're looking at an opening range breakdown here. So this is the first five minute candle. This is the low. This is the high. The way this strategy works is that as soon as it breaks, the next candle breaks the low or breaks the high, you take it regardless. There's, you have to take it. If it sets up, you got to take it. And, you know, so this is the level that we're basing our trade off of. And so when we take, when we take this trade, sorry, when we take this trade, we're going to get in right under this level. So our technical stop is going to be based on this technical level right here, which is the five minute open range low. And as you can see, once this puts in, there's no denying that this level holds some weight all day long. I mean, look at how the stock traded around this. Now, I know the, the 50 was there. I know the 9 was there. I know the 20 came up. But look how it all came and congregated around this level. You see this happen all the time, especially in markets like this. Now, when you have really good markets that run all day, then, you know, that's different. But this only goes up to 2 o'clock. You know, right when I had to leave. But I know it did. It has some more movement after that. But just to, to kind of give you an idea of what happens in the middle of the day to these stocks. They just kind of flatten out. But going back to this, this is our technical level. Now, how do we use this level for our stock? If I'm basing my trade on the opening range breakdown... If another candle, let's take this candle for instance. Let's say this candle was the candle that we got in on. It broke below, but then it got bought right back up. If the candle closes above this level, and then the next candle makes a new high relative to this candle that closed above your level, your trade plan is dead. The opening range trade is dead because technically the the setup was broken. Now, that doesn't mean it can't turn around and come back and set up again. But the plan is the 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 um, setup is broken. All right. But I'm just using this these two candles as an example. But if it doesn't, you're in good shape. And you make the move. And we did. We, we nailed the hell out this stock today. So now, the max loss or hard stock. How do we figure that? Okay, this is kind of where I had mine today. I, I can't remember exact price. But this is kind of where I would have my max loss stock. I get in down here. But... And this isn't the scale, guys. So th this is just me trying to illustrate this. But it's going to be outside of, obviously, my hard stop is going to be above the technical level. It has to be. But it also has to allow for the stock to move. It has to allow for the normal volatility in that stock. So that when you get in, the stock's rarely going to go in your direction. Rarely when you get in, is it just going to wash all the way out. It doesn't do that all the time. So it's going to bounce. It's going to go against you a little bit. It may, it may even go back above this. But if it doesn't close and confirm a loss, a claim of this, we're still in play. So you got to have this far enough away so that if this thing bounces and 
it doesn't take you out. So how many of you guys set really tight stop losses and you get stopped out time and time and time again? Every now and then the trade works out, never stops you out. You make some money. But all the other trades you get stopped out trying to keep your, your stop tight. The dumbest thing you can do. I'm sorry. It is. I can say that because I used to do it too. That was one of the reasons why I could not make any money when I first started trading. I was sitting there with a 10, 15, 20, 25 cent stop, which made absolutely no sense. Every now and then, the trade would just go right to where I needed it to and I'd make money. But on the subsequent trades, on all the other stop outs, I would never come out on ahead. So how do we find how do we figure that out? Okay, number one, we need to figure out how much money you're willing to risk on a trade. How much am I willing to risk on a trade? And here's another bad advice that I got. And you read it everywhere. And it's not bad for the right person. But for somebody trading a small account and you come in trying to risk 1% of your account or 2% because that's what somebody told you or that's what you read. That's for people who have fully funded accounts where if you're risking 1%, it may be $500. It may be $1,000. You know, it may be $5,000, but they have larger accounts. If you come in with a $2,000 account and try to risk 1%, you're only going to give it 20 bucks. There's no way in hell you're going to make money doing that. It just doesn't work. And then no matter how you try it, um, that's something that I can say does not work. And I don't say a lot of things that don't work in trading. Because to me, trading is an art form. It looks different to everybody. It feels different. You're going to see it different. You have to appreciate it for what it is. But there's certain things that just, it doesn't work if you're trading a small account and you're trying to grow. That 1% rule is not it. So you have to come up with a realistic number. And for me, I say 5 to 6%. Um, that's what I say. And if you have a $1,000 account, you might have to risk even more than that. But... In order to grow, you have to risk. When you trade small or smaller account, the risk is going to be greater. There's no way around it. Um, got to keep that in mind. So you got to come up with a, a, a number. How much are you willing to risk? Then I look at the ATR from the previous six five-minute candles. All I care about is the average range in the last 30 minutes of that stop. Because that's going to help me put my hard stop outside of the normal volatility. Remember, if the normal volatility over the last 30 minutes, the stock moved an average of, say, um, $2. And then I come in and put a $1 hard stop in. I'm probably going to get stopped out. Seven times out of 10, I'm going to get stopped out. And those are the seven times that we need to be winning. The three times it does not work, we don't need to deal with that. But those seven times that you get stopped out, those are the seven trades that we need as winners. In addition to, or we need four of those trades to be winners in addition to the three that are going to work regardless. So we, we need that. So in this case, let's take a look at this. This is my thinkorswim chart. This is what I use to watch and help me make my trade decisions because I can see this better. Down here is the ATR. It's six, it's measuring the, the previous six candles on this five minute chart. So is measuring this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. It's going through all of these. So you got a $3, uh, 218, 
250, 145, uh, 92 cents. And then we've got the opening candle, $6.15. So, just ride this down with me. Come on down. I'm trying to stay on that one candle, the right candlestick. All right, so come on, look right to the upper left of this, this cursor, and you'll see $2.41. All right, that is the ATR or the average true range of the previous six candles. Now I know the candle, the opening candle was huge. It had a range of six bucks, but it does factor in that so that it, it'll, it'll help you keep it outside of that normal um, volatile range so when we get in this stock here it's we get in and we give it say a two dollar and fifty cent stop we have a really good chance of it not chopping us out because by the time it gets to us it's already chopped around up here it's coming down and so we have a really good chance of not getting stopped out if we put our stop $2.50 and we let it go. So after this, we know what our ATR is. It was $2.41. We know how much um, we're willing to risk. Now it's time to adjust the share size. That's how you get to the proper share size. You know, let's just use $3 because I used $3 today. I didn't use $2.50. I could have. I just used $3 and made it a nice round number. I knew that I couldn't go in this with 300 shares and risk $3. I couldn't do it. That's risking. That's almost like risking $1,000 on a share because if it popped on me a little bit and I got some slippage I'd be down a thousand dollars that's not acceptable all right so I adjusted my share size down to two dollars okay and that worked out perfect I was risking 600 but look at the the move the potential move on this was at least 10 points it that 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 was the potential one at least 10 points so let's go back to oh don't want to do that let's go back to um think and swim chart real quick all right so we're looking at this i need a daily chart hold on I can show you on the daily chart. That's what we need daily, daily, daily. Um, okay, we're looking at the daily chart of BA. Uh, let me take these off. All right, so there's a daily chart of BA here. All right, where is the next level? the next key level of support that you would pick on this chart. We're trading up here today. We rejected the, this is where we took profit on that little swing that we had going um, yesterday. So where is the next level of support that it would likely get to? We've got a little gap here. We've got the top of the gap here. And we've got a little, you know, bottom of the gap right here at 154.80, like 155. So 155 was my target on this. That in my mind, 155 was the final target. So all we have to do, I know 155 is my target. I'm getting in 
Um, I'm getting in up here. I can't remember the price. We'll look at the trade in a minute. But we're getting in up here around 165, 166. There was a there was a 10 point move in this. Potential 9, 10 point move. Hell yeah, I risked three points to try and get it. Now I think today some guys were saying it was three dollars and eighty cents or whatever, and I was risking four dollars. I, I I wasn't gonna try to argue with you. But even if I risk four dollars, as I said in chat today, if I risk four dollars, I would gladly risk four dollars in order to make nine or ten points. That's over two to one risk reward. That is what we need to be shooting for. Okay, so you can't get caught up in how much money or how much room somebody else is giving it. You know exactly how to figure it out. I've taught you guys time and time again how to figure out where to put your hard stop. How much room do you need to give a stop? It's not it's not rocket science, but it's not um, exact science. All right, so it's not going to work every time, but it's going to work more times than not. Between 70 and 80% of the time, you will not get stopped out if you respect the volatility from the previous six candles. And you just, you know how much you're going to risk, you do that, and then you adjust your share size. That's all you got to do, guys. No... Um, there are no tricks to it. There are no hidden, hidden things. You know, that's just the way it is. All right. So if you like those type lessons, come join us. This is the perfect time. Everybody seems to be home. Um, you got all the time in the world. You could learn how to take your family to the next level. You know, that's what we're trying to do here is to get everybody to be self-sufficient where when things like this happen, you don't have to worry about a paycheck because you know you have money coming in and you know how to manage the market. Now, yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to lose, obviously. But that's what we try to teach. So you come in, you hear me, one voice. One moderator, one teacher, one mentor. I'm all the same person. Live chat. You get to see me trade live. And it sparks conversations like we had today in chat on the stop loss. Which is why I opened this recap up with that. So come join me. Um, AverageJoeTrader.com. Come check it out. If you have any questions, there is an option where you could set up an appointment to ask me questions or you can email me whatever you want to do just go check it out ed at averagejoetrader.com so here is my trade from today now here is i didn't mean to put this up here yet let me move this out of the way this is in the way right now hold on because you need to see everything so we get that out the way here is the first five minute candle all right i missed the entry here the one that, that i was telling you about the one that i was talking to you about i missed that entry i entered on this candle and i mean i in i sorry i entered after we kind of broke the low around the low of this candle. It it bounced and it came back. I was kind of holding off. I almost missed this trade because you know I kind of had in my mind that this market wasn't gonna work. It was I just had to get all of that garbage out and take the trade. And once I did that, I was able to take the trade. So I was a little bit late getting in this. Um, so I gave up probably about 80, 90 cents of profit on this, but still a decent entry right here. 
and took profit off at 163. This was predetermined. 163. Um, one, what was it? 160. I did it at 163, 160, and then uh, 155 was gonna be my my final target but I ended up just grabbing some at 156 and was going to say let's see how low it can go <coughs> but at 156.50 and then I was going to you know look at 155 then I was getting into that hey, how low can we go thing um, so I should have had an order here to take it off because this was my final target so I get an F for execution because I I changed my trading plan at the end of the trade which I shouldn't have done and then we come back you know we're, we're done so I waited for it to bounce come back give us another rejection here by now this was on short sell restriction and you can see it started to sell it just kind of bounced and I drew these two lines because I wanted to illustrate the channel that this thing was stuck in and once we broke out of the channel I was able to hit my first target and then it came back and stopped me out now this was a double click because I accidentally put my stop for 50 shares when I had a hundred shares on so when I realized I still had 50 shares, I went ahead and took it off. But this was the stop out. It was break even. I know you guys are looking at this and it's like, hey, it didn't claim the nine and all of that. At this point, it doesn't matter. If it's a break even stop, it's a break even stop. I'm not going to risk giving back profit to watch this thing retest. And you can see this turned into a really nice bullish move. Here's um, an entry trigger right here. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to take these trades. Um, I think at 11.45, I think that might have been, I don't know. If, uh, no, I had gone to pick up the van, the cargo van so I could get my daughter's stuff. I think the air conditioning guys didn't come to like 12 or so but I couldn't take this trade but this was a beautiful setup um, I don't know how many people in chat took it but this is what I teach and if I was here if I was still in chat I definitely would have been taking this um, would have been a nice trade but that was the that was what happened today um, I was trying to be a little bit greedy should have taken the profit here Instead of waiting to see how low it can go, they end up having to just take it off um, as it was coming back up. But um, everything else was, was pretty solid. So I think it was a pretty decent day. Um, and this day helped bring us green on the week. Because up until yesterday, when I added it up today, I was red. Um, you can see we started the week out. 13, 12, 02 in the hole. Three losing trades that day was a really bad day. And I didn't try to make it back the next day. I didn't try to, try to make it back Wednesday. I didn't try to make it back Thursday. I just waited and the market came to us today. It's just being patient, doing the same thing every day, waiting for the market to come to you. And it will. If it's not coming to you, you still should be making money. And so, look, we ended up this week, 821.33, not anything to write home about. But it's a lot better than what we did last week. You know, last week I traded 20 times. That is way high for me. Look, 9, 14, 11, and then here's 20. You see what happened? Over trading. It's what happened here. Overtrading. Kill you every time. But for the month, 2870, um, only a 55.5% 55 
accuracy or win rate or however you want to look at it. And I'm doing this just this quarter so you guys can see exactly why I don't think this is relevant. To me, it's just not relevant. What's relevant to me is this equity curve right here. And you can see what we've done this week, this month. You can see exactly what we've done this month. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for me this week. You guys um, that come in on Sunday mornings, I'll see you guys Sunday morning. Uh, we should be able to start looking at some potential moves here. Uh, we just really have to wait and see what the market's going to do Monday, where things are going to shake out, but we can start really looking and preparing again. Uh, so we'll analyze the market, build a little watch list, and kind of go from there. So if I don't see you Sunday morning, I'll catch you guys uh, bright and early on Monday.